Hey, the Mobile Mike Souls thought it would be a good idea to take this opportunity to update you on our adventures so far in our journey. We're eight months into it and we've been in 12 different states. It's been quite an exciting adventure and we'd love to fill you in on the details. So how's the last few months on the road been for you? Um, not too bad. Uh, been having a few problems with allergies down here in the south. Um, it was really bad over in West Memphis with the river flowing by. I mean, I really enjoyed watching all the barges and everything, but uh, the allergies were just tremendous and it really affected mostly my eyes. I couldn't, uh, it, they, the, the pollen was so thick it was scratching my corneas and making my vision really blurry, which meant that I couldn't drive um, safely anyways. And so we ended up staying a little bit longer. Um, numerous trips to the eye doctor, um, several prescriptions later, and I'm all good. So if we're seeing um, you with a lot of sunglasses on, this is why, right? It's true, the sun really is, uh, the brightness of the sun has really affected me quite a bit. Um, but you know, I don't mind wearing sunglasses. Um, you know. It's actually kind of good for your eyes. I have very light eyes to begin with, so it, it adds a little extra layer of protection. Um, but you know, we're, we've been through, since January, we've been through 12 states, um, and each state has been a different adventure. Um, you know, next, next season, or next year, when we get done with our um, sabbatical in Quartzsite, we'll be headed north, probably up in through Nevada, up into Idaho, Montana, um, or maybe even Oregon, I don't know. I haven't thought about that that far ahead, but next year, new adventure. I couldn't figure out what to wear for this video, so I'm wearing my Road Trip 2024 shirt, as you can see here. We got it in Memphis, and it's kind of fun. We don't get a lot of souvenirs along the way because we just don't have any room to store them. But if you're wearing your souvenirs, I guess it's all right. So what was your favorite sort of food? Wow, uh, it's really hard to, to, to decide, but I think it was probably the barbecue we had over in um, <clears throat> uh, West Ar or East Arkansas, I guess you'd call it. Um, and, and as well as in Memphis, uh, we didn't eat a lot of barbecue there. We just ate some food. Um, we were on Beale Street and the prices are pretty heavy handed. I think we paid, uh, nine dollars for a little beer <laughs> maybe this big um but uh we went up to um a place called stumpy's in um uh, in arkansas uh barbecue was delicious even though they kept running out of brisket i really want to try the brisket but oh well um and then we went up into um haiti missouri haiti not this not spelled the same way it's spelled with a y um, and had some uh, really decent barbecue there also, and as well as down in uh, Mississippi. We went to uh, Abe's Barbecue um, in Clarksdale. We saw the infamous Crosswords, or Crosswords, Crossroads. <laughs> um, went to the Blues Museum, which was, which was really nice. We've uh, hit a lot of museums, um, and everyone has been pretty good. There's been a few, uh, maybe one dead, but it was not all that bad. Uh, some of the other places that we ate, um, did, we liked the food in um, New Mexico. I have a new appreciation for green chili. Don't, how do you feel about that? <laughs> oh, I loved it over there. The green chili was so excellent. It had, um, you know, when, when you grow up eating just regular old um, red chili uh, con carne, you know, with beans, um, you know, that's what I kind of was raised on being from Wisconsin and like that. Um, never really had green chili like we did there. It was like so good. Um, so many flavors in it. You know, you, you grow accustomed to some people making chili so fiery hot that um, you, your tongue is just burnt out by the end of it. And I didn't find that at all, you know, with the um, uh, chili in New Mexico it was just just really, really flavorful with the, with the stocks that they use and just the right amount of green chili um, uh, 
it was great. One of the things that we noticed is that that cooking apparatus behind us is something you don't see very often on the road. In our RVing adventures, we found very limited provided cooking operational things or fire rings even at campsites. Mostly you are expected to cook within your RV or go out to eat. There's no apparatus for cooking at a lot of campgrounds. We've also found that there's also limited picnic tables like the one I'm sitting at here at campgrounds. It's the exception, not the rule. And that's just what we've found or usable picnic tables. There's been picnic tables that are warped and um, not in very good condition. This at um, the Fort Smith Ar Alma RV Park is actually quite good. They've got great cooking and um, seating outside facilities. It's been a little warm to do that, but they've also got fire pits at each campsite. You know, one of the things that um, we noticed was that some of the RV parks along the way actually uh, had on-site food and delivered it to us. Uh, what do you feel about that? That was that was really nice, uh, especially when um, we're only spending one night at a place and we don't unhook our toad um, to run in to get something to eat or if we don't feel like cooking after being on the road, um, you know, we don't want to break out our Kenyan grill um, and set up everything just for one night and we don't always have um, the ambition I guess you want to say to do it we just enjoy a little quick meal and then relax time. One thing we found out though is that in West Memphis there's no such thing as quality pizza. They they had um, we went to one place it was closed um, and then other than, you know, your standard um, everyday um, chain pizza joints, there really wasn't any to be had, but we rectified that as soon as we got into Little Rock. We found um, we found a place in, in DoorDashed in a pizza because we were only there for a night and it was like manna from heaven. All right, Sharon, so what's been your biggest challenge being on the road for since January? What's been... Uh, six seven months now you know the hardest thing for me was that up until january i was working so it was a total change of lifestyle and i continued um doing some contract consulting with the central california spdc and it's a little teeny small contract but staying in contact with people through zoom um actually helped because um, it's been from dealing with a lot of people to dealing with uh, essentially just you and me on the road. We've met some really interesting people along the way though, haven't we? We have, we've met a lot of different interesting people. Um, not so much um, long-term since we left Quartzsite. In Quartzsite, it was great because we had a community of snowbirds and we're looking forward to going back there and uh, spending the winter there again because we're we're no longer going to be chasing um, weather during the winter time and um, we'll be with friends the torrential rains down in the south is, is quite the thing isn't it it definitely has been if you've been following along with us on facebook um, i've shared a lot of the um, radar where you can see the lightning strikes and it's been quite um colorful and dramatic it was quite the show the other night when you woke me up out of a dead sleep to bring the awning in because all of a sudden we were having a thunderstorm and and the lightning was just lit up the sky like daylight huh it definitely did and you don't want to keep your awning out during a rainstorm for several reasons not the least of which is the wind can catch it and break it so we didn't want that to happen <laughs> not a cheap thing to fix no and that's something we just didn't want to have happen on the road so one of the things when we bought this RV and we laughed about it was the six TV sets and uh, <laughs> we we bought a TV set 
recently. Um, could I want to tell everybody about that? Well, um, due to um, probably a little bit of genetics and um, my time in the military, um, being um, in the airborne, uh, doing a lot of flying, doing a lot of shooting, stuff like that, as well as my uh, personal life, doing a lot of hunting and shooting. My ears um, aren't what they used to be. So we had a sound bar in our sticks and bricks and we decided we'd bring it with us. And so we um, uh, set it up and um, it worked at first and then it stopped. And then um, the TV that was in there didn't have the optical uh, part to hook up to the sound bar. So um, we thought, well, you know, we were kind of limping by with it and then we said to heck with it we just bought a bit the bullet and bought a what's now considered an inexpensive tv and put it in there and it has optical settings and we had to buy an optical cord because naturally somehow the one that came with it uh, was missing um or came up missing and uh so we watched primarily one tv unless you're on a webinar and then i go into our bedroom and close the door and watch TV in there if I'm not doing something outside. And what the TV in there you can watch over the air channels on. Correct, correct. Yeah, I mean we can't necessarily use all of the all the bells and whistles that we have set up with the main TV. Well we could, you know, if I wanted to I could take the fire stick in there and like that, but it's more hassle than it's worth and um you know a lot of times I'll just do whatever, you know, while you're doing your your uh, Zoom meetings or It's kind of funny we have six tvs two of them are in our bunkhouse that we don't use for a bunkhouse we use it for um, a big closet um, and they're very small like little monitor things um, more than more than a tv um, we have one it's, it's it's kind of funny how they set these things up why they put two in one room um, i have no idea but one's bigger than the other um, and occasionally i'll watch it but not very often. Yeah, the, the main TV is not the main TV. The one that is labeled main TV on the remote is not the main TV. It's, it's really, it's, it's funny how they have it set up against one wall where you have to be facing towards the aft end of the, of the RV in order to see it. If you're sitting in the other side of the dinette or in the recliners, you're sideways to it and it's, you can't really see it. Yeah, none of, none of the seating is really set up for it unless you're at one end of the dinette. So yeah, <laughs> it, it really is not a, a really good solution for that. So is there anything else you want to talk about to wrap up this? Uh... Well, one of the handy things we got, and I talked to a number of people when we first started the, this lifestyle, was what's the best way to connect to the internet because a lot of places don't have it, especially in, in Quartzsite. Um, they don't have a good internet connection. So we ended up getting a Starlink, um, which has been really great. Um, we didn't get the one where it just automatically finds the satellites and stuff like that. We bought one where you have to position it. But it works It works great. We, you know, up until, um, unless you're in an area with a lot of trees, it works really, really great. We have used Starlink since, um, very early on in the journey. We started out using Travelfy and that works well in some cases. However, we still use Travelfy on travel days because the way that we have that set up, as you can see, it's out and we move it around. Um, you can't very well do that while you're driving down the road. So what you're saying is we didn't spend for the $2,500 Starlink, we got the $599 one. <laughs> Basically, that's right. Um, I'm trying to, in my mind, envision a way of uh, when we're in a long-term spot, like we will be in Quartzsite, where we can set it up a little bit differently, where it's not sitting on the ground, um, it's more elevated, and um, in a little bit safer spot, so we don't have to worry about it somebody running over it, you know, pulling into the space we're in and um, running over it or, you know, something something catastrophic like that. Although, honestly, we haven't had a problem with that 
so far at all. No, 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 not that we've even come close to it, but it's always in the back of my mind. It's one of those things that kind of sits with you and you're like going, oh, um, gee, it would really suck if that got ran over. So thanks for following along with our journey so far, and we are continuing. We're not ending it here. Nope, we've got uh, a lot of life left in us, um, and we plan on uh, living it to the fullest. So please like and subscribe. Yeah, we just wanted to check in with you and give you an update because we've been on the road for eight months now, and uh, people want to know how we're doing, and we're doing. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day.